In this video, I'll be 100%ing The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. In order to complete this mission, I'll need to collect every heart piece and heart container, all 50 seashells, and complete Danpei's horrible dungeon nightmare. The game takes place on a magic island, and to escape I must find all 8 instruments in different dungeons across the world to wake up the windfish. Getting stranded on a beach, a lonely town girl stumbles upon Link's unconscious body. She takes me to her house where I awake suddenly. She is relieved that I am okay and she introduces herself as Marin. There's also Marin's father, Terran, who looks a little familiar don't you think? Terran hands me my shield and I go out to the beach where I first arrived so I can grab my trusty sword. To escape the island I must find every instrument to await the windfish. My first stop was the mysterious forest where I am greeted by a talking owl. I've never seen one of those before. They serve me as a guide. Before marching through the forest, I went back into town to do some gambling. I ended up winning a Yoshi plush that I could give to a mother of four in the town. In turn, she gives me a bow tie that I could then give to a chain chomp for some dog food. And I took this dog food to an alligator for some fresh bananas. And that's the end of the trade sequence for now. After some more gambling, I bought myself a shovel and a heart piece, which will raise my maximum health after collecting four pieces, which I have done. Now I can travel through the forest where I meet a wild raccoon. Sprinkling magic powder on this raccoon gives it a seizure, where it is then revealed to be Mario. Oh, never mind, it's just Terran. Up ahead, I find the key to the first dungeon, and on my way to the dungeon, I put my shovel to good use and dig up one of the 50 seashells that I would need to collect. I find the entrance to the tail dungeon, and I open the gates. As all first levels go, it's fairly easy. The dungeon does a good job of telling you the ropes, and letting the player explore new options. Every dungeon also gives the player the compass which tells you if there's any hidden chest in the room. I kill some Goombas, which is more reason that the game is in the Mario universe, before I stumble upon the rock's feather, so I can finally jump. In every dungeon there's also a boss and a mini boss, so now it's time for that mini boss. And it's dead. Uh, okay, I can salvage this. Uh, maybe the boss will be better. Oops, it's dead as well. At least I get a full heart container and a shallow. This calls for a celebration. And I know just the place. The trendy game. It's a wonderful stall. After defeating the first dungeon, I traveled to a mysterious cave. After defeating the pro wrestler, I found Bow Wow trapped under a rock. Taking him as my new companion, I would use his skills at chomping things to gain access to the next dungeon. The next level had some unique mechanics, such as using magic power to light a room, killing skeletons to get keys, and even having to kill copycat shy guys. The mini boss of the dungeon was an orc looking thing that charged at Link and threw some bombs, but it didn't last long against my sword. Inside a random chest, I found the power bracelet, which will allow Link to pick up pots and rocks. I then get the nightmare key, and I can finally take on the big guns, the genie. To kill the genie, you have to get it to hide in the pot, then using the power bracelet, pick up the pot and throw it at a wall. Repeat this step a couple of times, and eventually the genie will start spinning around. You'll have to wait until he attacks to be able to counterattack to finish him off. I grab the heart container and acquire the conch horn. Listening to the horn, I get flashbanged only to see a secret message reading, prayer, prayer, the prayer is waiting. I wonder what that could mean. I return to the mysterious forest to pick up a rock blocking an entrance to a torch. I light the torch and a little devil appears. He upgrades my magic powder so now I can carry more of it. He appears two more times in the game, each time upgrading a certain aspect of Link's maximum equip load. Since I've been collecting a bunch of seashells at this point, I decided to trade them in at the seashell mansion. My rewards were a piece of heart and a seashell sensor, which will make finding the rest of those dastardly seashells a lot easier. I finally decided to return Bow Wow to its rightful owner, and as a reward for saving Madame Meow Meow's Bow Bow, I got a smooch. What a lucky guy! Continuing the adventure, I get a bunch of monkeys, the bananas, so they could build me a bridge and give me a stick. Inside the castle, I need to get five gold feathers. They are scattered around and locked behind certain puzzles. The final one requires the defeat of this gold knight, and this mace flinging bastard knocked me down to one heart, but I could pull through and I got the final feather, which will be used soon. Meeting up with Terran, I gave him the stick, which he proceeded to piss off an entire hive of bees, but at least I got a honeycomb. I traded the feathers to gain access to a pothole plaza. Inside, I could get another set of hearts by collecting a heart piece. Finally, I reached my destination and unlocked the next dungeon. To celebrate, I went gambling. No, but seriously, this was one of my least favorite dungeons in the game, mainly due to the teleporting enemies that are introduced. They are a pain in the butt. 
Making my way downtown, I ran into some Dodongos. They're the mini boss of the dungeon, and to kill them, you just plant bombs in their face, and they'll eat them and explode. The Dodongos were blocking the Pegasus boots, which allow Link to run. The boots will come in handy against the next boss, Slime Eye. Firstly, you'll need to whack the eye enough so you can split the slime in two, and now you can kill them. I grabbed the Sea Lily's bell and went on my way. Returning to town, I purchased the bow from the merchant for 980 rupees. I also placed one of my figures inside the house with the mother of five. Right next door, I took a nap. Entering the dream world, I could grab the ocarina. If you try to play the instrument, Link sounds like a middle school music class. On the beach, I meet up with Marin and we have a lovely talk on a log watching over the sea. When we are done, I took Marin as a companion and we went to the trendy game. Because Marin was such a pro, she grabbed the guy behind the counter and we were kicked out. Thanks a lot, Marin. I took Marin to the top of a mountain where I met the husband of the mother of five kids. I gave him a pineapple from the trade sequence and in return, he gave me a flower and then took the flower to goat for a letter that I took to Mr. Wright. These two were having a long distance relationship, but the goat was catfishing this guy, which is kind of dark for a kid's game. He gave me a broom that I could then give to a grandma in town for a fishing hook. Marin then gathered up the animals and taught me how to play the ocarina. Using my 30 seconds of ocarina skills, I got a walrus to give me a seashell. Inside the desert, I could find a way to gather the last heart piece to complete a full road towards my help. And returning to the surface, I took on a centipede on quicksand. Defeating the centipede would give me the key to the next dungeon. But first, I decided to return to the goat for a seashell, and now I can get the next reward from the seashell mansion. It is a chamber stone. I'll need to collect each one, but that's a later me problem. I parted the waterfall to access the fishy dungeon. Inside, I would find the flippers, allowing Link to swim, which I believe he should have had this entire time, because he sailed to the island, and he didn't know how to swim. Just saying, it was a bit stupid. The flippers would allow me to take on the boss, Anglerfish. Playing the fish, I would get the next heart container and start the next row of hearts, as well as the surf harp. Ah, uh, what a relaxing tune. I helped the ghost find its house and forever resting place, and they gave me the second fairy job because of that. I gave the fishing hook to a fisherman under the bridge for a necklace, and I returned the necklace to a mermaid, and she let me grab a scale, which marks the end of the trade sequence. I moved the cemetery pieces to reveal a hidden dungeon known as the Colored Dungeon. As the title suggests, this dungeon has a bunch of color puzzles, as well as two mini bosses and a final boss. Getting through the sea cucumber and rock muncher, I'd get access to the last boss, which I had to whack a few times to get it to explode. After all that, my reward is the option between two tunics, the red and the blue. I decided to pick the blue tunic as I felt like I was dealing enough damage, but I was taking too many hits, aka I'm bad at the game. Swimming through a hidden entrance, I would get to the next dungeon, where I'd need to defeat the same skeleton guy four times to get the hookshot, one of the best items in the game, as it allows me to traverse across pits in the ground. If you thought that the slime eye was bad, just wait until you meet the slime eel. Using the newfound hookshot, I could pull out the weak point of the eel and chop it off. Repeating this two more times, the eel dies, dropping a heart container, as well as letting me get to the wind marimba. I find the little devil again, and this time he gives me more bombs. Thank you, little guy. Using the mermaid scale on the mermaid statue makes it move to reveal a hidden room with the magnifying lens. Now I can see invisible enemies. I tested it out by entering the house with a pool inside, and I can now see the guy that wasn't there before. He gives me a seashell for my discovery. With that seashell, I can get the next tier of the shell mansion presence for which it upgrades my sword, so now nothing can stand in my way. I found a room with another invisible guy that I traded my shovel for a boomerang and then bought the shovel back from him. I went to a frog concert to learn the Song of Soul, which I would need for later. Inside a ruin, I killed a big guard for the face key, which is the next dungeon. But first, I read a monument, talking about the windfish and what happens if it wakes up. There must be a distraction from the monsters, there's no way that is true. To take down the false prophets, I went to the face dungeon, where I got the upgraded power bracelet, which apparently makes Link feel like he can pick up an elephant. Ah, oh, I see. Take this, wall! Ha! 
The boss of the dungeon is a floor with a face on it, appropriately named Facade. Facade's weak points is planting a bomb on his face and letting it explode. Not going to lie, these fights are a bit too easy for my liking, but that could be due to the fact I have played Dark Souls 1 and 2, and those bosses don't pull any punches. After Facade is defeated, I get my heart container and the coral triangle. I use the Frog Song of Soul to revive a dead chicken, which will help me glide across the big gaps that the hookshot cannot help me with. Running through a rock slide, I arrive at the chicken dungeon. And this dungeon steps up the puzzles, but nothing my big brain can't handle. Inside the dungeon, I get the mirror shield that reflects fire and magic. I also find Kirby. Get back in your own game. Arriving at the top, I battle the evil eagle. To damage the eagle of evil, you use the boomerang. After what felt like a thousand hits, the evil eagle goes down. I went back inside to grab my reward, the organ of evening calm. And I also grab one of the last figurines, the piranha plant. Climbing up the mountain, I run into Marin. I Tarzan my way across and rescue her, and she begins to confess her feelings for me, but Terran interrupts our private meeting. I use the mirror shield to get through the cave, and I find the last seashell. Upon returning to this seashell mansion, I get my final reward a chamber stone. Entering the final dungeon, which is inside a volcano, I start completing the puzzles when I eventually end up outside where I can grab the final heart piece. So the only hearts I have are from the full heart containers. Continuing on my path, I got the magic rod to shoot fire at my enemies. It also melts ice, and with the magic rod, I can fight Hothead. All this fight is is spamming the hell out of the magic rod, which melts the boss's health, and with his defeat, I get another heart container and the thunder drums. The last heart piece is locked by behind Danpei's dungeon, which is a Mario Maker mixed with the Legend of Zelda. Upon completing all the dungeons, Danpei awards me with the final heart. Finally, I get to complete the game. I play Marin's song and the egg cracks. Inside the egg is a maze, and at first I didn't know what was going on. Eventually, I discovered that a book inside the town's library tells you the directions you need to know. So I followed the path, and I got to the final obstacle. This shade looking thing is the final boss, and there is a lot of phases. The first phase requires that I use the magic powder to deal damage. After a while, he changes things up and turns into a wizard. Reflect the red shots to deal damage and dodge the blue ones. It's that simple. There is then a callback to the first boss. All I did was hit the tail and when it started having a spaz attack I used a bomb arrow to finish it off. In the second to last phase the shade turns into Ganondorf but not the cool hot and green Ganondorf but the pig one. Dodge the fire and when he throws his trident use a spin attack and that's how you'll deal damage to him. But for some reason I kept failing and I even had to use a fairy to stay in the fight. Eventually I backed him into a corner and dealt the final attack. Now the final phase using the little devil's upgrade to my arrows I can shoot the boss's eye and jump over the spinning hand. I strongly believe that Ganondorf should have been the final phase, as this was way too easy compared to him. After the boss eradicates out of existence, a pair of stairs appear, and they take me to the Windfish, who confirms that if I wake him up, Koholt Island would be a memory. I watch in horror as the entire island gets Thanos snapped out of existence, and Link gets bidet back to reality. I wake up on the wreckage that is my ship, as the Windfish flies over Link, and he hears the faint sounds of Marin singing. Now it's time for gambling! I get the last of the figurines as well as enough money to buy the rest of the chamber stones and after placing down the bow wow figurine i get 100 percent in the legend of zelda link's awakening thank you for watching and if you want to see another of my videos i would recommend this video where i got all achievements in sonic frontiers that i'll leave on screen for you now